If you've been following along, you've seen us pull a small Journal 327 out from under the bench, come up with a plan for rebuilding it, fail, then come up with another plan, rebuild it with parts off our 350, pick up a Muncie 4 speed and a scatter shield, then fire it off for the first time on our Super Sketch Nova. Now, the journey continues on the pavement. Okay, so we noticed on our test drive that when we got this thing up to speed, we'd notice a little bit of a vibration. And what I think was going on was, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, yoke was sticking a little bit too far out of the tail housing on the drive shaft, and it was sticking out about an inch and a half. And what you're looking for there is between three quarters to one inch. What a lot of people probably would have done is just put a longer yoke on it that stuck out to about there. But that's typically not advised, and the way the driveline shop explained it is that you've got this big ball of energy hanging out here where the U-joint goes. And the further that ball of energy sticks out away from the tail shaft, this gets more leverage on the tail shaft. And so when you go and do a hard launch or something like that, that extra leverage makes it easier for this ball of energy to break stuff inside the transmission. And so I took our drive shaft and I had it lengthened by 5 eighths of an inch. That'll make the amount we're sticking out exactly 7 eighths. The other thing that I did too is if you notice on a Turbo 400 yoke, the inside of the splines right here are actually machined out smooth by a half an inch. And so if this was sticking out an inch and a half from the tail shaft, then you've got your seal, which was riding right about right here, then you've got the bushing that rides around this to help center everything here. That means that we probably only had about a half an inch worth of yoke that had the bushing on the outside and the splines on the inside. And so that's probably where we were seeing that wobble because there just wasn't a whole lot of engagement between the two holding it tight. Because on a Turbo 400, there's actually an O-ring on the output shaft that this has to be able to slide past. And the Muncie doesn't have that, so we don't need this machined out area. So what I had the shop do while they had the shaft was install a yoke that has the splines coming all the way out to the end. And if you add the half inch of splines here and then the extra five eighths that we're getting here, that's more than an inch of contact surface that we're getting back on the splines. Not to mention the amount that we're actually getting this further into the bushing that's supposed to center it. So with all that combined, I think it should work much better. And yes, while I was at it, I replaced the pinion nut with a new one. And this thing was also running pretty lean during our test drive, so I put a secondary metering block in it. The plate that was in it was a 21, which is equivalent to like 74 jets. And most vacuum secondary new 750s you're gonna see are gonna have 72s in the fronts and 82s in the rear. So I put 80s in the back and it already had 72s in the front. And then I put a four window power valve in it, which is another thing you see on a lot of new 750s as well. So I think we'll be about right. And another thing I'm doing is I'm changing out the hard line setup that I had with a setup that's got some braided hose so that whenever I need to change jets, I can easily pull the bowl off and just set the bowl off to the side while it's still all hooked up and not have to loosen a single fuel line. Yeah, that thing's pretty cool, isn't it? I also kind of get a laugh out of the fact that we've had a nasty looking engine in this thing for the last two years, and we finally get a good looking engine in it, and now we finally cover it up with a hood. So here's the funny thing about this test drive. We forgot to unhook the vacuum advance before setting the timing, so it was about 15 degrees too retarded. And even at that, it actually still felt like it had more power than the 350. But that's also why sometimes it would backfire under acceleration.
are so close. I love it. Yeah, secondary is open a little bit too quick, I think. So what I'll do is I'll actually zip tie the secondaries closed and just see how it runs on the primaries. If the primaries run perfect, then I can start working with the secondaries from there, either go up or down jet sizes or go stiffer or lighter springs and try different combinations, of course. Four speeds are badass. Coming up, we're gonna take you on test drive number three. But first, I want to tell you about another really helpful product from Performance Trends called Compression Ratio Calculator. It's the most comprehensive compression ratio calculator I've ever used. Other generic online calculators may get you in the ballpark, but none of them are capable of razor sharp precision like Performance Trends. Not only does it have the usual parameters like bore, stroke, and piston volume, but it can also factor in piston ring depth and the outside diameter of the top of the piston itself, giving you the utmost accuracy of both your static and dynamic compression. And the really cool thing is that if you already know most of the parameters of your engine, there's no more trial and error to figure out what you need for the last piece. Just click this button over here and choose the component you want and the calculator automatically sizes it for you. So head on over to performancetrends.com and give it a try. You know what? I think the next thing we're gonna sing <laughs> should be exhaust. Yeah, probably. I think if I just had some pipes going all the way out the back from what's already there, yeah. I think it would probably least, be a big help. At least further back, because it sucks yeah. right back in. I'm sure the next thing shouldn't be some window rollers with clips on them. <laughs> And of course, the fueling problem started happening. Breaking up, it's leaning out for some reason. That's weird. Not sure why it was doing that.
as per usual, we must unfortunately end on a low point because stepping up the jets made no change. So we gotta order some parts before we can get this thing worked out. See you next time. Lost my window roller back here when I pulled out. I think uh, I think it fell out through the hole in the floor. Yeah, there.